Welcome. Hello, how are you? I am. Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Back across the ditch. I am back across the ditch to Welcome. familiar mm. territory. Yes, which <laughs> feels like home now for you. Uh, well, New Zealand is home, but I felt like I was coming home too. Mm. You know, I mm. could easily have just slipped back into my home. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it, it's certainly very comfortable here mm. in Newcastle. Mm. Mm. This nature's abstraction is a bit about a uh, relationship between Australia and New Zealand, isn't yes, it? Yes, there are references to both countries in mm. my work, yes. Okay. This exhibition is a continuation, I think, of my journey with nature and with textiles and with um, what I call representational abstraction because I think I've been on this journey for a while of gradually finding my voice and uh, I think there's been several reasons why that's um, progressed in the way it has and one of them is, is my um, country move. Um, going to New Zealand has certainly, feels like it's changed my, um, not changed it but maybe brought out the colour more I suppose. And the other, the other really important factor was the workshop I did through Thomas Textiles last year, the eight month online masterclass with um, Etty Clover from Belgium. And um, that really helped me feel confident with my own voice and I think that's, I hope that's what's come out in this exhibition. The um, quilt behind you, I see, has some of the uh, work that you did for Borders with Yes. Yes. So this, I think, is a coming together of my Borders work and my nature work. And it is a personal response to a, a quote that I found when I was looking up Borders, and that is about um, art being like the flowers along the borders of civilization. And so this is my personal response to that. And so the, the borders, um, this, is, this was a very recurring um, motif in my borders work. And it is, it is my border in this um, image. And the, yeah, it's, it's like, you know, there's art is, comes in all shapes and sizes and varieties and um, some are significant and some are bold and some are quiet and, um, but they all merge into become a, a big picture. The, there were two um, flowers that I had to have in here and one was the kangaroo paw and the other one was the flax and to me that represents the two countries that are, that are my, I feel like are my countries. Do you think the um, colour wave for planets is much brighter in New Zealand? Um, I do, I do. There's a difference um, and I, you know, I've reflected a lot on the difference of colour between the two countries and each time I come back to Australia I'm struck with the softer um, colour ways here and, um, and, you know, New Zealand can be quite grey at times when it's <laughs> wet and wild but when the sun is out the, the contrasts are, are great and I suppose there's a lot more um, It's the word you sort of um, more cottagey type flowers over there, I suppose. Whereas in Australia, there's a tendency to go towards the, the native flora, um, or maybe they just do better here because of the climate. But um, and certainly, there are um, a beautiful native New Zealand flowers as well. Mm. I guess there's um, in a journey, you know, you're moving back and forwards a bit between. Um, what, I, what I've done in the past and what I'm doing. And so uh, this is a series that I, I love the leaf shape, whatever leaf shape it is. You know, I think people tend to think of me as doing flowers, but actually leaves um, figure just as strongly in, in a lot of my work. And um, I love kind of being able to use all bits of whatever I cut out. So in this wool red applique, um, you know, I will cut out the shape of the leaf and the little pieces are not necessarily from this particular one but maybe from another one. Um, the veins um, are cut out <laughs> and I've used them as well. So I, I have 
lots and lots of Ziploc bags of little pieces of applique that I can't, just don't throw away because I may use them. Um, so yeah. each part, each segment of those leaves are applique them? Yes, yes. <laughs> so yes, the very fine um, red or pinky mauvey um, colour in there is actually the, um, the vein that I've cut out and I've kept the piece that um, the in between piece, and I'll use it in something else. So then I've stitched the white, I've actually hand painted it and then stitched the white um, there. So there are many, many layers. I like to use bold shapes and I put them on top of the base fabric, and then I a, a, a lot of the time I match stick quilted and that pushes the shape back into the background and then I stitch on top of it and it pulls it back out. So that's sort of the process. Mm -hmm. um, so there's um, stenciling or hand painting in here, there's matchstick quilting, there's thread painting, there's hand painting and um, free motion quilting. So there's a lot of work. Do you do them one by one? At that series, did you start at one and then you just kept going to another, or do you have a few working at the same time? I usually have a number going on at the same time. I did start with this one first, and um, and then I worked on the four of them at varying stages, depending on. Sometimes when you know I feel a bit stuck, so I move on to something else till I resolve that design. Um, challenge. <laughs> so this one I felt was very important to bring to this exhibition because uh, it is, well it was done in New Zealand, it's, it's a compilation of all of my Australian designs and it was for a particular exhibition that was themed um, Australian flora and fauna and it's a compilation of all of my designs as I mentioned and it's, I've, I've structured it as sort of like a um, inspiration board so um, it's you know maybe feels a bit jumbled but uh, it is very much the colours of Australia for me and so it's quite different to maybe all of the other ones here even though I created it in New Zealand. It, it speaks to me of the Australian bush colours. It um, has travelled Australia and New Zealand. <laughs> uh, and Lois, where to from here for mm. you? That's always a good question, Anne. Uh, I think when you're working on an exhibition, it, you, there are lots of um, possible leads that you kind of come up with, and I haven't had time to explore all of those, although I would have loved to have. And um, in, in my recent work, I've done a lot of talking about deconstruction and reconstruction, and I think I'm also into not only deconstructing, deconstructing the original design, but in, I've started deconstructing the, <laughs> the the art quilt as well. And so I'm cutting out bits of the quilt and stitching over them, playing with how to do that. And um, this is an example of um, bringing together a lot of my techniques, but in but cutting away and also. Um, going into sort of three-dimensional art quilting which is exciting because I've never thought of my, considered myself a three-dimensional artist and uh, so this is this piece feels quite exciting in that it's 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 um, opening up possibilities for me um, and so yeah that's I'm hoping to explore some more of that I've uh, you know been cutting out bits of um, the quilt for the last year um, just small pieces, but I may actually be more radical. <laughs> Cut out lots. <laughs> <clears throat> That's such a brave thing to do, really. I imagine the first hole that you cut mm -hmm. was a bit um, daunting. Very daunting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was also really, really. Um, it was a. It was a really profound moment for me, actually, because it really. I could see it really resonated with the design, and mm. it was so important with the design. It was. Um, it was just a simple hole, but it, uh, which I hand stitched around, but it actually really spoke with the the design that I had um, started. So it was really important. So the next exhibition you have here might be totally different. It may well be with a lot yeah. more positive negative <laughs> spaces yes. based on the uh, wall behind you. Yes, yes. How exciting for you! 
Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And it's it's just lovely to see um, your body of work, mm. you know, um, up on exhibition mm. in a gallery. It, mm. it, it, it just, you know, to stand back and to mm. um, reflect on the amount of work and time and, you know, thought processing mm. that's gone into making that happen. Mm. So you're going to keep exploring and pushing that where oh, you cut back a yeah, whole lot more? Yeah, definitely. Because it feels like it's tentatively done at the moment. It, yes, it's very tentative at the mm. moment because mm. it's uh, it's quite a big mm. step to take mm. to cut away something that you've been working <laughs> on. <laughs> For months. Yes. <laughs> That's well, right. that's stitching. Well, you can't exactly kind of put it back together no. again once you've cut it. <laughs> I've started working in um, series. Mm -hmm. uh, so exploring, I've, I've been doing that for a while, but actually now I'm consciously doing it and pushing the design further mm. and uh, coming up with, with completely different um, art quilt mm. or um, whatever, artwork. <laughs> And I am enjoying that, you know, and feeling okay about that. I think it, and that was part of doing the workshop mm. through Thomas Textiles last year as well. Um, it's so helpful, isn't it, mm. to just stay on one subject and mm. keep pushing it, particularly mm. rough drawings. Yes. Until you are amazed what yes. comes out. Because that's if right. you don't do that practice, you yes. stay within your comfort zone. Yes, that's right. Mm. I've never been one to stay in my comfort zone, <laughs> and <laughs> completely. <laughs> and the other thing that I've really enjoyed doing is, is in my design work, is pairing back the design to be very simple. And um, in some of these, you know, not only just using the positive and the negative, but using every bit of the cutouts as well. Mm. Yes, particularly the one that um, you've won an award for mm. this one, haven't mm. you? I have. Yes, it's a, won a first prize uh, in the Great New Zealand Quilt Show for a medium mm. quilt, size quilt, mm. which um, uh, was very exciting. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's very beautiful. It's very um, striking, isn't it? It's um, very kind of bold, I think. <laughs> Got a lot of red. Yes, <laughs> there's a lot of red. <laughs> You're not known for being a red girl. No, no, red is a colour that has come to the fore mm. a lot in the last year. So mm. the next time we see you, you might be dressed in red. Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> this is, my art allows me yeah, to be. Yeah, go that far. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so very much for showing again here at Time of It's oh. such a treat to have you here. And I love watching where you're moving with your artwork Thank over you. the last what, nearly 10 years, yes, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. And that's been a lovely thing yes. to establish wonderful friendships mm. with artists and just mm. watch that. So, and you know, thank you, Anne, because you've done a lot of nurturing of artists in that way too. You know, the opportunity mm. to to exhibit here mm. is, is a wonderful experience mm. and opportunity. So, thank you. Great pleasure. So we look forward to seeing you again, maybe in the next three years. You never know. <laughs>